So later on, Kroll finds finds Sulu and and Uhura, and um, they have a little conversation. It's like about ph philosophy of Kroll's philosophy versus versus um, Sulu and therefore Starfleets. Uh, it's interesting. Federation has taught you that conflict should not exist, but without struggle, you would never know who you truly are. You have no idea who we are. But you'll soon find out. So this scene is cool for two reasons. Maybe let's do them one at a time. So it's cool that Kroll has his philosophy. Everyone's mm -hmm. got a philosophy. And his philosophy is that you need to have hard times in order to overcome them. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and now his view is from a warrior's perspective. Mm -hmm. So his hard times is in terms of combat, right? Um, and there is some type of truth to that. So for example, if I, if I only have yes men around me all the time and then no one's challenging my ideas then i a ceo surrounded by my my c-suite of yes men could lead us into some pretty bad places um also if they're always saying yes and taking care of things around me then what will happen if we're actually in a situation when somebody actually like needs to say no like will i be able to handle it yeah and like also i think this is a military thing as well if you don't fight wars regularly you lose practice and you get bad at it. Yeah. So if you have two societies, one warlike that's fighting wars all the time and one that's peaceful that has a military but barely uses it, it's hard for the military that never goes to war to like start doing war at a high level right away. Heck, you need the conflict. Even if though even if that group that has that doesn't go to war often, even if they have better weapons, even if they have better logistics, Right. But they don't know how to operate those. They don't know how to actualize their ideas. Mm -hmm. Then they they very possibly could lose because mm -hmm. they don't they don't have the culture. They don't have like the, yeah. the mental flexibility and resilience to encounter the difficult times. Yeah, yeah. and I've I've never been in war, but I imagine like you can have all these great ideas and things to execute, and they actually work. But if you can't execute them under fire, in terrible yep. situations, under stress, emotion, all of it, guys dying. It's, it's worthless and you need to practice that. Right. So on one hand, I don't like it. But on the other hand, it's kind of true. I, I get it. Like I see it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's cool, it's cool for, as, for me as a viewer to see how this group of people changed over time or I guess how their society is shaped given that this is like the, the linchpin of their philosophy. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting here is right at the end, Sulu says, <sighs> You have no idea who we are, but you'll soon find out. That's a threat, that, right? That's a threat, yeah. That's Sulu saying, saying so, so Krull says, like, you guys are about exploration and science and making friends with people out in space. And Sulu's saying, yes, but actually we're a warlike people, right? We That's got right. teeth. We, like we, yeah. we, can, we can mess you up. We may be explorers, but if we want to bring it, it's going to be brought. That's an interesting statement about Starfleet. Because Starfleet, though, is like, we're about exploration and science, and we want to make friends and bring new people into, into the Federation. But actually, every ship you have is armed. I guess maybe not science vessels, but like, but every ship that we follow along in, in, the, in the series, mm -hmm. like, they're armed. Like, we, is it possible for us to have a purely friendly fleet, purely friendly species? This, yeah, this does go back to me and the confusion of, like, is Starfleet military? exploration because it seems like it's a mix and i i always thought that they should have exploration and peaceful diplomatic ships and then dedicated military ships it shouldn't be the same but maybe this is the kelvin timeline they just are more militaristic oh i was i was commenting on the two-facedness of starfleet where they oh. like publicly tell everyone like we're about making friends we're about science and exploration and and learning but it's actually like hey We've got guns like all loaded up in our pockets. Like, <laughs> like we're ready to fight whenever you like you you imprison us. Like we're we're we already have our tech developed. We already have our ships ready to fight. Like, but we tell everyone like, yeah. we're about peace. All right, we're about peace. We're about progression and you know all these peaceful things. But if you disagree with us about that, we're gonna kill you. Like, whoa, okay, whoa. all Dang. right, right, okay, all right. 
they do i think this is dealt with some in like deep space nine with section 31 and different things mm -hmm. it's interesting building a utopian society it's challenging like it's not straightforward like everybody just get along and don't be a dick like that's right. in, that's not it's so much more complicated than that so they want to build this federation which has like which has external boundaries and then they want to build a culture internally where they can be harmonious and and be be safe amongst each other but actually built into that is we're dangerous to defend the utopian society because you can't be utopian with no defenses ah, it's such a dichotomy you, you to walk on yeah weird but back to crawl i get it like his philosophy of you need to challenge yourself in order for your for self to improvements. I mean, imagine if you if your exercise routine was going to was I'm going to lift five pounds, thirty reps, and that's it forever. Like you, you don't get growth like this. You need like increment. You need a progressive overload. Right. And the same thing is true for our intellectual requirements. If you have the same ideas all the time and you have you're surrounded by that all the time, that doesn't allow room for growth because mm -hmm. there's no reason to. That's why I do. That's why I do an assault every month. Just to keep, you know, keep on my toes. I salt somebody every month just to make sure I, you know, I can handle myself in the trenches. Just, Not physically, <laughs> you, you're intellectually assaulting them. Okay, okay. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Physically, I just go on the street, make sure I'm, it's too much. Okay, so you don't need to do both. You do both. You assault <laughs> someone and then, and then assault their politics. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is for your growth. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm you're weak. weak. Step it up. <laughs> I should be getting beat up if society is strong. I mean, it's gladiators, right? 